You see, there were a lot of disappointments in 2017. Uh, so many that I had to re-record this one, shuffling things around, okay guys? This was what you could call the year of microtransactions, fucking up some games that could have potentially been really awesome. So, uh, deep into the list we have quite a few of those. And honestly, almost all of these games could end up on the worst list. But the worst list this year is exclusive to really bad shit that should not exist. This is a bit different. It is stuff that should have been good, but wasn't. And really just disappointed us. So here we go, without further ado, these are the top 10 most disappointing games of 2017. Number 10. What invigorating boss gameplay! Wow, you got the shield down! Wow! Hack the console! Gosh, golly, okay, man! Oh, I killed the shield! Holy shit! Okay. Time for plan B. Agents of Mayhem starts out this list at the bottom, mainly because I don't think people ever really expected this title to set the gaming world on fire, okay? What it does do though is it makes you disappointed when you're playing it, just simply reminding you that you could be playing better games, like the Saints Row series that this game spins off from. The board meeting must have just been something special. Hey, let's take the world from there, but instead make it into like this boring ass shooter, devoid of anything fans love, throw in some, you know, cartoons and, and spy action. Uh, okay. Uh, honestly, this couldn't have been any more standard fare. Its open world was completely uninspired, just window dressing, and the lack of any interesting activities really killed it. It's just shooting gallery after shooting gallery. The sound design, the character dialogue, the story, and more were painfully average to below average. And that's if you can get past the numerous annoying glitches and bugs. Hey buddy, you seem to be having a problem. Are you in the default animation blender thing? Is this the default blender animation? Yeah it is. It feels pretty good. Whoop. And despite its one good point, including Johnny Gat, that's about the only interesting character you're gonna find throughout the whole game. And he's DLC! Oh, fuck that. Boss, it's so good! <laughs> Once again, mayhem <laughs> stands in the way of genius! Uh, I'll take care great. of you later, that's, Hammersmith. That's, that's Time to shut bit, this whole uh, thing down! What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, mediocrely designed. Number 9. Your wife will get burned! The power of the Lord will get this world! And when it does, arrive in this world, the gates of hell, the of hell shall open up for the of the Antichrist show! And this one, that's why you don't understand your feeble mind can't handle the girth of the Lord's message! For the Lord will soon return to the earth in the form of a baby! And it don't, 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 For now you understand the Lord's message! For the Lord has given up- I don't know what happened to Outlast 2, okay? Uh, you know, other Joe and I really enjoy like horror games, and we liked the first one, and I guess just hoping for something 
completely different from what we got. It, it, you know, more scary. It just kind of got boring at times, running away from crazed fanatics. Okay, get, no, no, hey, no. I got your footage, bitch. <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> That's oh, nasty, it's, Joe. It's Get him out of here. She's gonna, she gonna throw it at you, Joe. Let's go. Let's go. That's embarrassing. She's gonna throw it. See what I tell I, you. I slipped you on the dookie. I slipped on the doo doo. Fuck. That fucking doo doo on the I ground. I slipped on it, man. I'm sorry. Go, go. Get the f out of here. The whole reason we were excited to play it. I mean, it's got plenty of gross out shock visuals and that kind of crap. And then there's a piss bucket. That's poo poo over there. Yeah, I see this poo poo. <laughs> you know, but you're just constantly dying to figure out where to go, and that just sort of sucks out all the tension, this trial and error gameplay. And it just pisses me off that the developers maybe just didn't create actual good level design here, that you have no idea where the fuck you're going. God damn it, you opened the door. Oh! <laughs> What is that bullshit, man? What the f with this game, man? It's nothing but goddamn trial and error. Maybe f design your levels a little f differently so we can have the same amount of fun, but also feel like f it is fair. Ha ha! Oh! <laughs> Add on top of that that the AI is freaking inconsistent as hell. It makes. Uh, it, it makes, you know, playing it feel completely unfair at times. Now sure, the formula of running, hiding, and reloading batteries into your camera is intact here, but somehow it's just less engaging than the first time around. It's forgettable, it's boring, it's ridiculously short, it's, and just gross, uh, with an unsatisfying ending. Overall though, it's not a terrible game. There are some interesting parts, but for better or worse, the first game just ends up being a far superior experience and one that we'd recommend uh, that one and its DLC over Outlast 2. Yeah, and all this religious crap. For the Lord has given unto me the power! They said in their hearts, let us destroy them together! They Number 8 I, I, I honestly, I don't Ready. know. Let's, let's get this thing started, let's go. Fight! Charging star! Take this! I really enjoyed the simple, approachable, yet, you know, easy, but difficult to master gameplay in Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. I believe it's one of the easiest to play and get into and have fun immediately in the series, right? Uh, especially for casuals. And I like it a bit more now than I did back when I reviewed it. However, that doesn't excuse the disappointment that it brought at release. The story mode, it, it, it was a complete mess. God damn, Captain America, lay off that fucking juice. He's going oh, crazy man, with that super so serum. I need some of that shit. I will release you from Ultron oh, Sigma's right. grasp. You ugly, dude. Trying. While I appreciate the attempt, the, the character models look bloated and weird, and, and some of them had some pretty weak voice acting, the story, if you could call it that, was painful and nonsensical, just jumping around so much, and it makes your head spin. Not including some of the most iconic characters of the franchise, though, is just unforgivable in my eyes. I mean, no freaking X-Men, 
Seriously? Seriously, no X Men? Let's talk about this. I'll, uh, I'll put you in the next one, okay? No. And while we do get a few unique characters that are new, that are fun to play, there are far too many wasted roster slots with pointless additions. Spencer? Spencer? Really? Who asked for Spencer? With so many more amazing Capcom characters waiting for their time to shine in this newest fighter, we get Spencer? Big guy. They're just taking a nap. This guy? Everybody's Eventually. like, Stark? Spencer? Who's that guy? <laughs> nice weapon, Lance a Little. Spencer? He doesn't even acknowledge Spencer. He, he acknowledges Only the little dude. Oh, <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Spencer! <laughs> Fuck you, Spencer. Why'd they give a Spencer at the. There you go. Oh, while the gameplay is fun as hell, just like Marvel vs. Capcom 3, everything else surrounding it is just a big, fat disappointment. It's, it's cheap presentation doesn't help when you got the likes of Injustice 2 to contend with in the same freaking year. It's a shame. Okay. Good. Ah, you ripped my groin! <laughs> That's what happens when, when you do drugs, kids. Don't do drugs. Yeah, you become stronger. Oh, yeah, I, don't I do mean, drugs. Even though I became a super soldier to do drugs, don't do drugs. Number seven. Do you see any problems here, Joe? Yeah, the, can the car looks horrible. <laughs> Actually, the grab. What the fuck? Yeah, the cars look horrible. Did you what is that? That's N64 what graphics. Fucking what? That's <laughs> N64. <laughs> hey, what? Turn down the graphics. What the <laughs> fuck is this? Turn down the graphics. Oh, they're right loaded in right oh, there. Right there. We go. It loaded in a little bit more, but it still looks bad. We're loading a little bit up, at a time. Your car's looking a little bit better. A little bit better. <laughs> oh, Need for speed payback. Are you serious, EA? Jamming in microtransactions and yet another franchise killing its heart and soul just so you can pinch out more pennies out of a dying market and franchise while it still has a little bit of life. You literally just choked the shit out of Need for Speed. You, you've hurt the brand here. And honestly, I wish somebody else would publish the series because I actually like racing games, okay? And Need for Speed tries with, with a story and certain parts of it actually work all by, you know, being intendedly cheesy, but still, you know? But the thing is, replacing actual car parts and modification pieces with loot boxes and microtransactions in these stupid cards, you've completely sucked all the fun out of it. Car's crazy. No! 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 Acceleration. Four. Two plus two is four. Quick mass. Minus one is three. Quick mass. These stats on these cards are just so stupid. It's beyond infuriating. Hell, even the loot boxes look like literal Vegas slot machines as it cranks out arbitrary bullshit and generic names for parts for your cards, which are just 
plus this, plus that, plus jumping. Rubber banding abuse is 100% on display here. If you don't have the right combo of lotto cards, you'll see your car get destroyed over and over until you do. Despite racing a perfect line and seemingly making no mistakes, you're gonna get overtaken because there goes all that fucking bullshit in the game that his fucking parts are better than my parts because he's got better cards than I have in my fucking car. You'll feel like you've been cheated, and you have. And no, dialing back the microtransactions in the game doesn't make it any better, EA, okay? You done fucked it up. And this is further proof that you don't really care about making solid games anymore, just how much money can be cranked out of them. It's true. Only cost is five dollars, guys. <laughs> Show what five dollars sounds like. You're probably never gonna use. <laughs> Talk about the show I'm using it all the time. It's because you purchased it. Right now. Number six. Well, I noticed that you hit pause, <laughs> so I wanted to take this time to show you our, our, our handy dandy uh, market. <laughs> I've, I've highlighted it here for you, just uh, wanted to let you know it's uh, over here. <laughs> yeah, I saw it. <laughs> okay, well, just wanted to let you know. <laughs> no, no thank you. Oh, hey, look at that, it's an expansion pass. Uh, continue your story in the War for Mordor with new fucking tribes and storm missions and all sorts of good shit right here. Once again, I am not interested. Please leave me alone. W Blade Newsletter, look. Middle Earth Shadow of War. A perfect case study for the disastrous and harmful year of microtransactions. A good game marred and muddied by poor leadership and priorities at the top. And how about we jam in some loot boxes and microtransaction for orcs in a single player RPG that no one asked for and has no right being in the game. Does that sound great? Alright, let's do it. Hey, <laughs> open the market! Yeah! Spend stuff money and I'm like, get your money! Yeah! I get your money, I get your money! I get your money now! Fuck you! All the excitement and goodwill this game had conjured up had deflated in an instant when gamers realized the sinister vehicle at its center. It is just obnoxious! And gameplay was certainly effective in its later acts. It comes to this boring grind, this repetitious thing over and over to just make it really appear, appealing to just buy the fucking loot box orcs so you can get through that portion of the game, make it more attractive to buy. Oh shit! Oh god, this fucking damn what? What? Is it as good as me? I took two games to prove that I am superior to all gods! And while it had some great moments here and there, and improved on the formula in several ways, especially how to traverse the world, it also took some big steps backward throughout. There's tons of busy work, the, the trivial collectibles, it's predictable, the whole hum story. I expected more from the sequel. And this could have been so much better if its heart was in the right place. It's not a bad game, but it certainly was a disappointing one. Destroy your war chest! Get your war chest! Every war chest guarantees a legendary limited time offer! Get your war chest! Here! You want a war chest? Get your war chest! You want a war chest, sir? Get your war chest! War chest right here! Go ahead and click on it! Limited time offer! 
Get the fuck out of here. Did I ever tell you about our silver, gold, and mithril editions? Well, let me tell you all those about that. First, the mithril edition sold out real quick. You won't get some more, though. We got the statues, and we got this, and then, you know what? I'll tell you what, in the gold package, what you're gonna get is you're gonna get that season pass that you love so much. Then you gotta get you two tribes. It's one additional tribe, and then another additional tribe. It's gonna be great. The tribe is great. Number five. Ghost Recon Wildlands with my good buddy, Waxen. Um... Looking great. Looking fine, actually. That is that is great. But anyway, we're going to be doing a mission or two. I'm, this is what I'm going to have to deal with. Uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands is a third person. Ghost Recon Wildlands. Now, Dell mentions that the fundamentals of Wildlands are solid and that it can be considered an all right game in certain aspects. And I'd agree, but ultimately, I'm glad I just kind of skipped over this one because as you play more and more, it's just painfully boring. It feels like recycled gameplay, the video game. Almost all the mechanics that you've seen in other games are just crammed in here and other better ones and, and you do them over and over time and time again with seemingly no end in sight. The best parts of this game or when you're just fucking around with your friends, just crashing helicopters, killing llamas, and just treating it like an open world playground for a few hours of fun. Whatever, dude. Oh my god, two convoys. Do that this one. I got it, dude, don't worry. It stopped. It's definitely stopped. Alright, don't I need a revive. Dude. Drone me, Waxen. Don't worry, I've got a that poor man's neck. Oh God. He's just trying, oh God. They don't know where you are, by the way. They're completely unaware. So he's like, where could they be? Oh no, they spotted me! Oh God, pull it! But as a successful brand and, and this intended franchise, it doesn't work as advertised. The repetition in the game kills your motivation to keep going. And what about this even makes it Ghost Recon of old? Nothing! It just fucking uses the Ghost Recon name, okay, for its own game, that license. I was hoping that maybe this game could build and improve on The Division's weaknesses, but it ended up falling on its face. It, it, it probably feels more boring and, and unfinished and repetitive than The Division ever did. It sucks. And the coolest thing about the game is honestly when they at arbitrarily added Predator, 10 months later. The only reason why it's not higher on this list is because there's probably more people playing this now because of that Predator DLC than the next game on the list. Number four. It's obviously Clippy, you know, did some amazing groundbreaking work in the industry and then just like peaced out and yeah. now you're back. So what was the what was the story about why you chose to come back? I'm slowly drifting to you. There's blood in it and people explode and they curse. You know, I wanna be I wanna be the, the rated R version for all these kind of PG rated shooters. Lawbreakers. I actually liked Lawbreakers' gameplay, but there's no denying that this game underperformed in a huge way, making it one of the most disappointing titles in 2017. I mean, many of you have probably not even heard of it. I, it was likely a combination of an uninspired world, extremely bad timing, which led to the game's death on arrival. When Cliff Blazinski set off on his own from Epic Games and Gears of War to start a brand new studio. Many were excited at what was being cooked up. And honestly, what we got is just another multiplayer hero shooter at a time when we were just getting about four or five too many, okay? Despite some of its fun gameplay, it just had no staying power. That much is painfully clear when player counts are in the low teens on Steam. 
I went around and met with EA, Activision, Ubisoft, and I'd go into this meeting a little bit cocky, and I'd put the book down, and I'd be like, I want to make another billion dollar IP. This is Gravity Defying Combat. Nobody's playing so low that I wonder if even anybody at the studio bothered to play their own fucking game. Ouchies. Gravity defying combat. You can do a reverse rocket jump across the map in this game. Exciting. <laughs> that was a cool explosion. Exotics. Yeah, but Joe, come on. There's not a literal fucking farm in the game, all right? Oh yeah, then what do you call the hub? The farm. Exactly. Yeah, good point. So I'm dressed for the occasion. I don't know about you. Joe, <laughs> you gonna see once we get out there, boy. Bring come on, it. let's go! Destiny 2. Now I put Destiny 2 here at number three on the most disappointing list because honestly, I didn't put any hype or extreme hope into Destiny 2 being the, the time that Bungie gets it right. I kind of knew this was coming. Son of a bitch! Not again! Not again, Joe! What the fuck? You done fucked it up! And what we got is kind of what I pretty much expected in the end. But maybe actually a bit less than I expected in the end, to be truthful. It feels like Destiny 1.5, like an expansion, like a cleanup of its mess from the previous game more than anything else. Could someone hand me my mask? I can't see. Oh, it's because I'm on the ground. They just leave me here. Wait here then. On the floor. So much is recycled, so much is repetitive, so many decisions were made to make the game better for casuals that ended up pissing off its fan base and its hardcore fans that both by now casuals and hardcore players are leaving and, and its player counts are falling hard. Its expansions have done little to quell that, and most recently have kind of showed that Bungie doesn't really give a shit. Hey guys, big game coming up. I got some new moves to show you. Check this out. doesn't care what its fans want at times. Hell, there's even been a few scandals that have broken over Bungie listing the wrong experience game for your characters, cheating players out of progression, and no real apology, just a patch and hey, we're moving on. You know, let's go, don't worry about that. Then later they're like, oh, oh, we'll give you a gun that pretty much breaks the metagame again. Oh. 
They destroyed the lore, let me say that, okay? They wiped out interesting parts of that, and fan channels have more interesting ideas and speculation of the universe of destiny than the damn company itself! You did it, Bungie! You finally did it! You put the grimoire in the game! But I can't fucking read it. This is why I <laughs> Oh, shit. It's all hugely disheartening, with vastly more impressive competitors coming around the corner if Bungie plans to give us yet another small incremental upgrade in Destiny 3. You can count on this series being on, the way, on its way out, and an overall huge disappointment for both the legendary developer, who is probably no longer such, and its publisher, who probably paid out the wazoo for this Mediocrity. You lucked out that they came at you one at a time in single column. This is turning into kind of a long walk. But honestly, I still have small hope. Please let Destiny 3 be much better, okay? This is your last chance, okay? Three strikes and you're out. You've got to nail this one right out of the park. Please, show us actual effort. Show us new classes, new mechanics, or new ideas before it is too late. You know, this isn't even split screen co-op, so you're not really playing. <laughs> I get that all the time. You gotta... You gotta go home, Joe, by your own. I don't know if I want to. <laughs> I like pretending. You just used mine, you son of a bitch. Yes, your goddamn father's dead. You're the new Pathfinder. Sorry, my face is tired. Number two. You done fucked it up! Mass Effect Andromeda. Oh no! Oh god, no! Why? Why have you forsaken us? I didn't want to put this one on the list. I really didn't. I know, I have friends that still legitimately like this game, and, and I do too in certain parts. I've grown more fond of it over time, but that makes this even more painful and just deserves its spot because of what it could have been. It's just the poor writing, the crappy missions, and those faces. My God, those faces. Whom? And your goddamn father. Sorry, my face is tired from dealing with Everything. Goddamn the dad! Saved my life. <laughs> Sorry, my face but is tired. I can't show emotion. For me to get <laughs> the world looked fantastic. Why were the faces so fucked? Yes, the gameplay was fun, but abundant glitches soon even ruined that bit. You would encounter a graphical glitch. <laughs> we had yeah, a whole bunch there of those. Was yeah, so we like, did. Pretty... God oh, damn push it! Push him off! Push him ah. off! Push him! Oh, I want oh, to push him. What the fuck? Oh, no! Defenses here and here. The cat have been quiet for too long. See? No reason we can't be civilized. See? No reason we can't be civilized. And worst of all, it was just in too many parts a boring slog. Why were its enemies so mundane? Why was it so predictable? Why was there no real, good, interesting new species in this completely different new galaxy? What the hell? With disappointing character personalities that pale in comparison to the original trilogy, it's just 
a clunky mess. Glitch after glitch, it was just it, it just felt like a buggy game. And for you know, so the the there needs to be way more polish in this next one. You can't have this embarrassment again because this is really disappointing performance from Bioware. Yeah. You have you have Bioware has a reputation of making really good shit. They're up there with Blizzard, where people love them and adore them and like their shit yep. no matter what, even if it's garbage. And maybe we're seeing a little bit of that here. And and if you're putting out stuff like this that's going to degrade uh, that reputation, it's going to be bad for you. So hopefully EA is like, oh, shit. And Bioware is like, oh, shit. Okay, we have to compensate yep. because some of this stuff is hilarious. Now, I oh, will yeah. say, I will say, like, this may be the Mass Effect that me and Joe laughed at the most. Oh, yeah. Like, Yes. And in that way, you can almost kind of have fun. 10 out of 10, then. 10 out of 10 <laughs> if you're just making fun of the game. Oh, yeah. Because it's so easy to make fun of. And now, Andromeda may have single-handedly killed the entire future of the Mass Effect franchise. If that isn't a huge disappointment, I don't know what is. Please, Bioware, don't give up entirely. G give it a second try. Do, do a reboot again if you need to. But take all this feedback and put it to good use. We want to see Mass Effect return, but we need your best effort to go along with it. Not this. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Yeah, I'll fucking know. kill it! I'll yeah. kill it, don't worry! Yeah. <laughs> My eyes, it burns! <laughs> I've been staying up watching <laughs> marathons and shit! <laughs> I have brought peace, freedom, justice, and security to my new empire. If you're not with me, then you're my enemy. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. I will do what I must. You will try. <laughs> <laughs> You don't fuck it up! Yep, that leaves only one. That could be the most disappointing game of 2017. One that could easily place high on the worst list for the egregious error it made. No, that. And that game is, of course, none other than Star Wars Battlefront 2. The game that literally presented us with the most insulting microtransactions and loot box progression system that we as gamers were finally able to agree on something, rally together and push back and say, hell no! AAA games pay to win. Hell no, we don't want to pay $60 and then get hit with Vegas slot machine system where we could dump tons of money in order to get what we think would be competitive cards but turned out to be garbage shit. There's nothing here that makes you feel special. <laughs> no. It's literally it. garbage. It's trash. Every fucking pool is trash. So what's the point? Laughable emotes, zero skins, nothing about Battlefront 2 is set up or built for loot boxes, yet EA found a way to cram them in with the bloody fist up its ass to rip off the Star Wars faithful. Fuck that. I had 
had such high hopes. They were adding so many things that we requested. They seemed to be listening to our feedback. They did in certain points. You know, they listened this time around, right? And they sold it as the most gamer friendly and the most improved EA game to date. And we were sold a lie. Yeah, the season pass removal was, was done, but it was supplement with ruining the game. Progression via loot box drops. The prospect that we'd play as the Empire in canon was ruined by mission two or three, where we're just, we just drop the Empire and immediately become the most rebel of rebels, saving the entire lives of every major Star Wars universe character ever. What? What the f is she doing on the an X-Wing? Like half a second from the meeting her. 12 seconds later. People like you, the reason hope can prevail. After you murdered hope all of our families. the reason we're going to win. And friends. Welcome to the new You Republic. are a stupid person. Thank and you. And I will shake hands with you now. Because you are stupid. Five minutes later. <laughs> what? This shit just got out of control. And it's a damn shame because it is so beautiful. And you can tell there's good parts. I mean, the space battles are amazing with the help of another studio and, and one of the best parts of the game. The class system slightly helps. Uh, hey, do you notice a trend? Everything we asked for turns out to be a great idea. Only the things that EA decides to force in the game and the things that DICE refuses to use from Bandemic's original due to stupid pride are holding this game back from being what it can truly be and what it needs to be. A royal fuck up that even our Disney overlord had to step in and say, cut it out. I honestly wish that EA lost the exclusive license. They can still make Star Wars games, but give another hungry, talented studio with, with boxer-like passion a chance to just knock it out of the park like in the old days. If there is even a Battlefront 3, DICE and EA needs to completely make an apology game with every feature jam-packed in here that we were hoping for with, for decades and completely remove that shitty progression system in the loot boxes as an apology. No microtransactions in there. And then we might actually finally get the Battlefront people have been waiting for. But is it too late at this point? It might be. And that is why this is the most disappointing game of 2017. <laughs> what is this? Get out of here! You're ruining the party, you idiot! Uh, <laughs> really? That idiot thinks I'm gonna... Oh, this is gonna be rich! What do we got here? Uh, oh, yeah? Oh, you tell <laughs> Doesn't this idiot know the children love to gamble? <laughs> An easy game to make good and you fuck. I don't know how. That has to be the main reason, guys. So, tons of disappointing games this year. Let me know some of your most disappointing and let me know which ones of these could be on the bad list because you know almost all of them can. But just wait, bad list right around the corner and there's some truly big travesties on that one. Okay, guys? Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next Angry Joe Show. Bye, guys.